Welcome to Bullets and Milk, our Westworld after show. We're going to be covering season one, episode four, Dissonance Theory. Unfortunately, Joe and Maverick could not be here. Their train stalled out before they even got into Westworld. But for two people that got on the right train, I've got DJ and Kelly. We got on the right train. We did. <laughs> we made it. Yeah. Totally made it. <laughs> they made it because they could afford the 40 grand. What? <laughs> Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, follow us on Twitter at that hashtag show. Make sure to turn your tr trigger fingers into Twitter fingers by using the hashtag bullets and melt. You can also do it below in the comments. Um, well, let's roll the clip. The maze. The goal is to find the center of it. If you can do that, then maybe you can be free. I think I want to be free. Where are you headed? To retrieve something of great value. We got enough men. We know everything about our guests, as we know everything about our employees. All right, so this episode was called Dissonance Theory. Now, off camera, we asked earlier, well, what, what the heck is dissonance theory, right? Yeah, and there's <laughs> a lot of interesting information in the definition alone. Well, you guys knew I didn't, so let's yeah, go back into it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, cognitive dissonance. Uh, According to cognitive dissonance theory, there is a tendency for individuals to seek consistency among their con uh, cognitions, which, uh, i.e. beliefs, opinions, you know, sure. uh, when there is an inconsistency between attitudes or behaviors, that would be the dissonance. Something must change to eliminate the dissonance. I think based so, on today's episode, very appropriately titled. Yes, I completely agree. Absolutely. I, I think every episode is like, they know exactly what they're doing when sure. they do give that title to it. It's like, all right, episode's been done. Now we have to sit here for weeks and try to make <laughs> sure we have a really good title. And process every, all much. the meetings and the nuances. And it's like they, they think about things ahead of time. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, talking about that, um, this weekend I took a little bit of time to research just like the names oh, of like people themselves, and that was like, oh, that that blew my mind. Awesome. Like the one that stood out the most was uh, Teddy, mm. and it goes back to Ford and his little god complex thing that he has. A little, well, a little well, god complex. Because <laughs> Teddy, <laughs> Teddy is Theodore, and uh, Theodore means um, it's like a gift, a gift from God. Interesting. Essentially, Interesting. and. To an extent, it seemed like when Ford finally gave Teddy his whole backstory, mm. it was... He gave him a purpose. Yeah, he gave, he gave him a yes. purpose that uh, he was like, yeah, we didn't have one before, and here it goes. In some ways, to me, it felt like he has a little soft spot for Teddy. In other ways, he, he hates Teddy. <laughs> but... <laughs> But in that way, I feel like, I feel like Westworld one. hates Teddy. Yeah, Westworld hates Teddy. Oh, I feel like we're being a little too nice with that one. Well, uh, we will say Westworld didn't hate him too much, but we'll go into that. We'll yeah, go sure, into we'll that. get into we'll that. We'll go into that a little bit. So the episode uh, opens up with, oh, yes. again, it, with the eye. Again, with the eye, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting because every time we're watching it, it's uh, it's going through a loop. She's in her loop. Either she's in the beginning, the middle, or the end, but she's sure. in her loop. And um, we know that Bernard pulls her out of the loop to have these conversations with sure, her. Sure. And when he has this conversation, the whole thing about it's it's eye opening itself. Mm. And that's cool that they always start off the opening with the eye. Yeah. But so we start with it sure. and uh <laughs> we notice that Dolores uh well her knowledge uh, as far as her knowledge base sure. has really shifted. I feel like it's adapted in a lot of ways because even symbolically, the eye opening up, each episode her eyes are waking up that oh, much yeah. more. So the conversations, the analysis, even, mm -hmm. and I love the way that uh, Evan Rachel Wood just every time Bernard tells her, "Hey, okay, get rid of the emotions," and she adjusts and just the little performances that I love her portrayal of Dolores. Oh man, you really see what these these hosts are capable of. You really see the the process, and through her eyes, mm -hmm. you get to see the evolution. Her questions, her questioning of things, and even Bernard having to ask Dolores what made you did we program that or was that you was that me well, or was that you yeah i love that now, i love that now one thing i'd like to bring up which kind of goes along agrees with you sure. is that um one thing i love the most about this show is the symbolism that they throw in everywhere and yeah. my interpretation of them opening up with the eye and bernard speaking with her is that everyone knows the saying windows are the eye of the soul mm -hmm. and of course these guys don't have souls but this is our way of seeing they? the soul sure. of these AIs, where Absolutely. he's talking to her and he's asking her what she's thinking, why she did this. I mm -hmm. mean, it's kind of something that you would have a conversation with yourself. Yeah. So I feel like every time they open it up, we're kind of 
getting an idea of Dolores and her like soul, her personality. Mm, absolutely. Ooh. And that's like why I keep throwing <laughs> that eye out there. I like that. Well, it, it brings up a question, which I know is the over like the overarching story, which is mm. when and where does the soul really begin to exist or anything? Sure. And can something that's man-made actually even have a soul? Can we create something with a soul? And We get to ethical questions. Yeah, so, we sure. do. And yeah. it's the question that's always there. Well, you said, you know, it doesn't have a soul, but d d is, is she gaining one? Sure. And, I mean, everything is relative. But what's really interesting about the conversation with Bernard and Dolores mm -hmm. is he is intrigued. He is intrigued mm -hmm. by her evolution. She, he is intrigued by her performance, her response. Just It's something being born right in front of him, essentially. Mm -hmm. Enough to where he wants to give her a purpose. And he's kind of being a Ford himself and wants to set her on the path to finding the map. But I think this is actually the first time we've, we've confirmed this, right? Yeah, sure. This is the right first time. Like, what is Bernard's amazed. intentions? And we still oh. don't know it per, per se. We don't. But, but we he, finally he have He wants a, her yeah. to, to go to the game, and now we know that the game is something that can set her free. Absolutely. Because before it was like, what is this? Game? You said something very important. It is about setting her free. That's right. Like, do you want to be free? And this episode alone does focus that about is, yeah, the host. I'm sorry. Yeah, the host, the host. Gets, getting free. Yeah. So really interesting. Well, it, for me, he mentions the maze for the first time yes. and confirms the fact that he says, well, I, I want you to play a game. So he knows what the maze is. is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So who? Uh, he, knows, he knows what the maze is. Did Bernard make the maze? We don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. Do we, we know, don't know. Bernard, do we know if Bernard knows who did? Or well, did he just stumble upon it? Well, to me, it connects back to with Lawrence's daughter. And w when the daughter talked, uh, spoke to the man in black, oh. she says the maze wasn't meant for you. Yes. Who is the maze meant for? That's the biggest question to me. Like, what is the end game for the maze? Because what is the, the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow, essentially? Yeah. Mm. So that's interesting to me. Jeez. Questions. I, Questions. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, though, well, one question I do have is sure. so is, is Bernard kind of being like a shepherd of a flock when it comes to the host, like him versus the host in that way? I think he's willing to take, I, I think he's willing to put everything on the line with his gamble. There's a, there's a little bit of gambling because obviously he wants this to be secretive. Mm -hmm. He definitely wants the, the conversations to be strictly between him and his personal investment with her. Yeah, okay. I mean, she is the, she is the very first guest ever created for Westworld. That holds a lot of stake. That's a lot of information, regardless if it's supposedly wiped out or not. Now, my big thing is, I don't think Dolores is as much of a puppet as much as Bernard likes to think she is. I think she even might be playing Bernard in a lot of ways. I think she's more aware than she even knows, in my personal opinion. Well, okay, I'm sorry. Know. I'm cheesing for that. That's so good. I thought, I thought the same thing. Did you? Okay, no. okay. I mean, we <laughs> know for a fact that she can lie. And Bernard's asked her before, and I forget which episode, it could have been the first one, but he asked sure. her, um, you know, can you lie, and or do you, are you lying, do you sure, lie? Sure, sure. Something, and she said no. no. Uh, and then she was saying how she would never hurt anything, but she slaps that fly like nothing, mm -hmm. so we know that she's lying. <clears throat> And can lie. Well, we know that she's not the same person anymore. Yeah, and I wouldn't say that part as far as yeah. using that as an example of her lying. I wouldn't say that's that's part of a, an example of her evolution. But she's not the same anymore. That's for sure. So in in a sense, she's um, her truth is changing. So in that in that way, I do. But agree I don't with think you. that Bernard <coughs> can fully control her. I agree with you. Yes. I, I completely agree with you. And what's interesting is we get dual <laughs> windows or dual perspectives with Dolores mm -hmm. and Maeve, because mm -hmm. Maeve uh, is. Yes. is, is is probably a little bit ahead because of what she's even leaving bre uh, breadcrumbs for herself. That's what's interesting because yeah. Maeve starts to have flashes of the cleanup. Are you yeah. saying that Maeve is ahead of Dolores? In certain ways. I disagree with that. Wait, so, Ooh. Um, Ooh. I. <laughs> okay. Wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. I, I, would, I would like you to elaborate. <laughs> uh, so I believe that. And I don't know uh, what you have talked about on past episodes exactly, but I do believe that Dolores planted um, this bug in Maeve. I believe that she has given Maeve the key to unlock her memories. Sure. Yeah, no, 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 you're absolutely right. Well, but she I spoke think, the code. Wait, 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 I want to hear this. <laughs> but I think that Dolores is secretive. We, as the viewer, don't even know what she's capable of, what she remembers, but we've seen her remember stuff, sure. and she keeps it hidden. She keeps her composure like clean. And so I believe that... In my opinion, Dolores 
has taken further steps sure. to, but we haven't seen it yet. Like with the gun and everything, and she mm. like sees it, she doesn't see it, it's out of her mind. And oh. that's it. She moves on to Kiran Maeve. It's like constantly like clockwork is going on in her head and she's trying to figure it out so much step happening. after step so after step happening. where Dolores is taking care of this, but not letting anyone know that she's like, like trying to uncover it. She's keeping it hidden. And I believe that's why she has gotten further because it's been happening for a while now. Then let me say this. I mm. will, no, because that's great. I love this kind of stuff. I love like, you know, just going you know into what it. I'm saying. Oh, no, I, oh, okay. I absolutely okay. I do. Sure. So I, I, will, I will actually adjust what I, I'll say. Um, Maeve's awareness is different from Dolores. Okay. We, no, I'll agree with that. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're happy. <laughs> well, with it, I mean, but her awareness, as far as what we see, is her. Uh, uh, well, let's address it, or you know, talk about the elephant in the room, which is the cleanup man. Mm -hmm. That's what she the sees. The man in the hazmat. Yeah, exactly. The suits. So she sees the cleanup men, and uh, they're there and they're cleaning up, or uh, in. She starts to put pieces together. She starts leaving, like you said, breadcrumbs for herself. And that's the only and, reason why I said sorry to interrupt. It's no, just, that's the reason why. Um, Again, I use the word ahead, but it, her awareness is so much different from Dolores because Dolores had to be woken up as well. Now, obviously, her her Pandora's box is much different from from Maeve's, mm -hmm. but Maeve's yeah. Pandora—I mean, the way she's going about it—is really interesting because it is so different mm -hmm. from Dolores. Yeah. Well, interesting question is how many times has she gone through the loop mm -hmm. and recognized those cleanup men? Because it's That's like a question. picture every time. Absolutely. Um, well, right now, let's go ahead and head over to a commercial break, and then we'll come right back. Okay. So, still, my question goes to, when it comes to Maeve, mm. how many times has she been woke? and Because <laughs> she woke as well. And uh, <laughs> how many times has she done it in the loop? Like, is every time representative with a, a picture? Is that how we're pretty much understanding it to be? Yeah, it sounds like... Like, yeah. she wakes up from a dream, oh, and then, you know, becomes an artist and draws it every time, or what? I, I think so. I don't think that's a straight evidence. Right. I think that hmm. uh, it's a possibility that she could have been having this dream and then eventually decided to start drawing them and then storing them mm -hmm. once she kept, like, getting this feeling. But that's just my guess. Sure, I okay. Okay. my turn to disagree, little lady. No, 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 whatever. <laughs> no, but no, I do feel like one thing about Maeve is, or even the characters in general, their storylines, and essentially they do have a personality. Even mm, though yeah, they, they, are, they, do. they are just artificial intelligence, they do have a personality that's consistent. And her personality doesn't really stray away often. Like, she does have the same habits, even if they do program her to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. To me, it, she strikes me as the type of person who would always leave herself okay. a breadcrumb, as, at, at, at least until the part where she is at that point of the, her awareness. Once oh, she got yeah. to that point, then she was consistently doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, it, it wasn't overnight. It yeah, took, yeah, it took a little definitely. bit where it's just like, wait, I saw Teddy, and I was stabbed, and I was on the operating table, and okay, I need to write this stuff down now, you know what I mean? Like, I'm at that point. I'm, I'm freaking the hell out. That's, that's what okay. it is. Okay, yeah, that so. makes sense. That makes sense. But actually. to agree with Kelly, though, I guess I'll take my disagreements back. But to agree <laughs> with her, we don't know how often that happened or when that started to happen, so sure. But actually, there's a lot of time frame elements we're not yeah, aware of. Oh, that's... Thank you. you know we're bringing it back to me for my thoughts. What's um, up? Bernard, when it comes to his... When, when did he have this conversation with Dolores? With Dolores? Sure. Because... After he's he's talking about it, and we know that after every conversation, he puts her back into her loop, mm. and she's in her loop, and it's sometime in the middle of her loop because he just she shows back up and continues on with her day. But when is this conversation happening? We don't have a, a clear timeline. Matter of fact, Kelly and I brought up, or we were talking about it as far as we don't even know when. Maybe you do because you seem like you, you delve into like <laughs> websites and like you're, you're like a wealth of knowledge. I, I am trying. You're doing well. <laughs> But we don't know how long it takes to reset each yes. death. Like, obviously, Teddy gets killed, like, almost every episode until today. But, yeah. like, literally, there's a mess to clean up every time. And it's $40,000 a day. Yeah. So what happened? like, we don't have, like, the complete explanation as far as where the guests are in conjunction to the reset in terms of, and, and all that because good stuff. I, I can't tell where... So, for example, we got Dolores, mm -hmm. and she had stayed with the um, men in outside for a couple of nights. We know that. Yeah. yeah and, sure, sure, but, sure. for example, the people back at Sweetwater, um, like the uh, women workers in the... Uh, I don't, you know, you know what I'm talking about. The women Those of the ladies. night. We were good. I was <laughs> the women of the night. That's what I call them. Did you know um, 
guests come and interact with them and they go to bed and they wake up, do they restart their cycle even though someone else like Dolores still going is still the- going through oh, it? That's so so then gosh, how do yeah. they inter- interact with each other in that case or so on? Yeah, I haven't figured it oh out. My gosh. So, nothing's certain storylines definitely does take the time span over a few days yeah. like for instance they even made mention like okay we'll put them in this situation a few days later they'll, they'll be broken out and you know what i mean so how often yeah. like that's such like yeah. you have to imagine the creators and the the innovators of westworld like they've done so much for this world you know what i mean because, because where does this storyline end where does this begin because ultimately like even Maeve's flashback a lot of her flashbacks is when people have been wiped out. Yeah. Completely wiped yeah. out. Oh, yeah. another thing that connects it, keeping on point, sure. mm-hmm. is oh. that I've noticed a lot of her flashbacks happen every single episode we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. There's always some moment where a guest freaks out and just starts killing people for no damn reason. <laughs> but only because they can. They just start going like, bam, bam, bam. That's, this that's, is so much fun. That's oh, Westworld world for you. And then she has these flashbacks. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if that has any connection. No, I mean, they're definitely heightened states. I mean, they, it's definitely, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. For her, it's definitely that way. And they've been tragic flashbacks. Yeah. So definitely oh, yeah. traumatic. And you may, you may mention of this, actually, in one of the other episodes, as far as the man in black mm-hmm. and, and being at an emotional state. What was that again? Oh, well, he says something to the extent of uh, you're at your truest or you're, you're most human when it's like somehow he's inducing pain or, you know, exactly. something of that nature. Yeah, and something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's something that he does. But that's interesting because the men in Black's... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. But what's really interesting is like the men in Black's ambition in this episode totally revolves around the interests, appearance, um, appeared interests of oh, yeah. the, the guests. It does seem like... Oh, I'm sorry, the host. The, the, the interests of the host and setting them free. So that's that's another thing we'll get into. Mm, well, setting setting them free, I'm going to bring you right back because uh, I'm going to go back to Bernard. Sure. And, and, and uh, I have a point I want to make. Oh, well, go ahead. Make your point. It, it's a speculation, and I haven't formulated a theory just yet, so I kind of want your guys' help with this. Sure. But I do know that this uh, show plays a lot with symbols, theories, imagery, and whatnot. Yeah, but sure. I did notice something with Dolores. Mm. And... I feel like this show puts too much into detail to make some simple mistakes, but I've noticed in various episodes throughout her hair changes. And I don't know if that's something that represents her state, whether it represents when she's aware, when she's not aware, or timeline. But sometimes her hair is pulled back, sometimes she has thick ringlets next to her head, Mm -hmm. and it'll be like a scene that seems connected, but I feel like it they could. wouldn't. There's too much detail in this for the hair, the hairstylist to be like, oh, like that looks like about right, and then sure. they cut scene, and it's like, oh, this coffee cup was moved. Like I feel like they would have put more thought into it, and I need to go back and really look through all the scenes and see right. when she has the ringlets and when she doesn't. They're like interesting. Loose. So, so y- you have to play the scenes where the ringlets are there, uh, and then um, after that, play yes. all the scenes where they're loose and see if these two actually make a narrative on their own. Yes. they make our Just time way. either a, a representation of her. Uh-huh. Or representation of the timeline. So you don't think it's a coincidence? I don't. I don't because sure. I mean, even in the beginning, when he gets walked in and he's like, "So which hat?" and they got one side white, one side black. Basically, they're saying good or bad. Mm. Stuff means stuff. Interesting. Oh, jeez. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like when you put it together that way, yeah. that makes a whole lot more sense. Um, so I had an idea, and uh, well, moving back into it, um, Elsie. Mm-hmm. Elsie is the, uh, you know, she's like the lead tech or whatever, and she starts to question uh, Bernard. And yes. what she does, essentially, which is, uh, they're using her as a, a narrative tool or a tool to ex- exposition, where she asks the questions that essentially the audience wants to ask. Absolutely. And I love that. She is the voice of the audience. She's a perspective and of us on the outside world. Exactly. And she gets into the, well, what the shit? What the shit? Because yeah. it's like, what's happening here? Look, and, this, he's, and then he... Just brushes her off simply by telling her, uh, yeah, everything's wrong as you said, and simply I'll tell you why. Orion doesn't have three. It, it has, has four. four. So, man. <laughs> yeah, but I so. will say this. There was one thing that Elsie did say that I loved because, to me, it did pretty much wrap everything up. It seems like everybody here has an agenda except me. That's right. And ultimately, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So, we don't, I mean, obviously, we don't know what her story is going to be, mm-hmm. but it is interesting that everybody does have an agenda. Everybody does have their own interests, mm-hmm. even in, within Westworld. And, for instance, the man in black and even Bernard, you know, it's, it's just interesting where similar interests can be along the same path, 
but where does that path branch off and when it, be, when it does when it does become like the man of black's interest versus Bernard's interest versus even Ford's interests. Oh, that's a good point. So one interest that I definitely want to know more about is Logan. Yeah. Uh, because Logan's Let's interest, Logan. he drops the bomb right there and lets us know. Now, last week he told us, essentially, I love when Logan speaks, people need to pay attention, essentially. Uh, because <laughs> Logan told us in just a brief in passing that, hey, you're my brother-in-law. Yes. And uh, yeah. you're married to my sister. And you're still hints. Yeah, right, right. But I mean, but he just said it right there, and yeah. it was just in passing. There's a lot of exposition, then, is what you're saying. There is. There's there exposition is. in every dialogue. He just gives nuggets every time Logan speaks, and then he drops the other one now that, you know, our company has stakes in the park. Yeah. Yes. And, and William that, was not aware of this, though. No, William yeah, was not well, aware of this. Well, William said, uh, essentially, we came here for, uh, well, I thought we came here, you know, for, for family. For family bonding. And, and this is business. Exactly. And then he says, well, uh, what did he say? Business? Well, oh, with, with family. Our, with fa- with it's this, always business. With our family, it's, it's always business. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. And then um, that's when they go into it, when they talk about the stakes. So they have their and own interests. We thought they were just going out. We thought that Logan was a guy who just loves this game and was yeah. showing him a good time as family. Yeah, well, presumably, a, presumably. And then you just turn it around on us, and it's like, oh, geez. So just, no, they have their own interests. Just with a little bit, yeah, just with a little bit of speech. Boom. But we were talking off camera earlier about this and the line itself. And it, it's interesting because the way it's written, the way it's delivered, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, let's take a break, and we'll be right back with it. Now, before we really even delve into Logan, mm. I want to go right back real quick because... We were talking about this right off. Mm. Uh, the hair. Yeah. Now, you said that there's no way. Well, essentially, because the show's too smart. The show's too smart to do something that dumb. Mm-mm. Right? I mean, so that's how you said it. Right? I, I that's how you said it. Too, right? Too smart to be dumb. There are some like movies or shows where you watch it and someone's noticed something. Like where the clock is a different time. Like it's later and then all of a sudden it's like earlier. <laughs> they, they make small mistakes. Sure. But this doesn't seem Appreciate like a show... When it, it's definitely a show, like I was saying before, where they put the hats in, they put too much into detail. Every meaning has It's a show, not only yes. like a story, but you have to watch everything and not miss any detail. Yep. So I don't think that a hairdresser wouldn't have been able to make sure that her hair looks the same in a continuous scene. That's awesome, though. Well, like, see, I, I would have never caught that. That's something that I, I really want to post to the audience, if you guys are watching right now. If you guys happen to notice anything that really does support what Kelly's saying, because I think I've started to notice some, <laughs> comment below, <laughs> please, because we do want to know more. And that's Help actually something that's interesting. Help her out. Help <laughs> oh, her no, out. No, seriously. Help I love this around. kind of stuff. Because, <laughs> hey, there's so many perspectives. And just to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying and what you were saying, uh-huh. you blink. And you do miss details. Everything oh. has a meaning. Everything has a symbol. So I wouldn't I be surprised. I'd ask you guys. I'd ask some stuff. We, oh, yeah. We've had to ask each other. Yeah, yeah. And be like, did you catch the thing with the thing? No, but did you catch that part? What episode were you watching? Yeah. What episode were you watching? <laughs> so it's pretty it's, great. It's, it's great because it brings it back. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it brings it back. It's, it's kind of like Lost where it's a, it's a DVR show. But can we it's talk about like the want. man in black real quick? Like uh-huh. Ed Harris was the man in this episode. See, that's the thing. I do want to get into the man in black, but okay. I still got to go right back to Logan. Because uh, with Logan, when he drops those bombs, it's good. But the whole company and stakes in the park, there was a little bit I interpreted of a, it exactly. way different oh, than you guys. And sure. that's what we want to we go into. Talk about that. And, yeah. and that's why, okay, so how did you interpret it? I took it as Logan... Telling William, because, okay, the reason why this conversation got brought up in the first place is because now squeaky clean William yeah. is now falling for the game. He yeah, does yes. have an interest He's in the game. Love. He found <laughs> the heart. So, and th- keep in mind, okay, what, what have we established with William so far? He is squeaky clean. He mm-hmm. does have a conscience. Yes. He is more morally and ethically on the up and up. He's a white hat. Dedicated to his wife. So White not, hat, good guy. Yeah. White hat, good guy. Logan, not so much. You know, black hat, not so much. Fucking and fighting. Fucking and fighting. That's what he does. So, or maybe uh, the white hat means innocence. I like it. We don't know. So now Logan turns to, to William telling him, A, oh, they got you. Everything is planned out here. Everything oh, yeah. is monitored. And this is the reason why our company needs a bigger stake. I took it as their shareholders, their representatives. Obviously, William didn't know what the business part of the trip was about. Right, right. But Logan, revealing it to him, is saying, we're representatives and our company should get more because if it could work on William, we deserve more for this because this is this is more, like, we deserve a lot more. So we should invest more, is we what should, you're saying. We should get a bigger payout. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and Kelly took it a different way. Please tell us. Yeah. So, 
I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying <laughs> that because it's such a good game, uh, good game, mm-hmm. they need to make more money from it. They need sure. to be able to make more money. Get a from better it. payout. But the the words he said, which I wrote down, is that's <laughs> why they need to bump our stake in the place. Mm-hmm they need to uh, bump our stake in the place. So before he's saying like, oh, they're making even you fall in love with this place. That is so impressive. That's why they need to bump our stake in the place. But I'm thinking, why does this company need to? Like with your interpretation, I would have assumed that he would said, that's why we need to get a bigger stake in this place. That's why we need to bump our stake. That's why we need, but when he says that's why they need to bump our stake, Oh my god. I, I didn't understand why he was saying that's why they need to pay us more. That's why we deserve to have more money. I mean, if the game's so good, the game makers, rather the investors, should make more of the money. But it makes me think maybe uh him and his family has more to do with the game than we know at this moment. Oh, I don't disagree. And, with that. and so so if that is the case, what would that more be? Just throw something out as far as what would that more be. What would be, be the theory? I, I think that he's related to Ford. I kind of, I, I, I there's no proof yet. And um, there's probably a lot of facts disproving <laughs> okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. But I have a feeling that maybe he's a nephew. Maybe uh, the Ford has a sister or a brother and they have children. Mm-hmm. And that's why. So an, uh, a supposed inher- inheritor, maybe. Maybe. I mean, maybe the family is also investing in it. Because clearly they're factor. investors. We know that they're investors. But my impression was that he was saying that the company needs to pay them more. They deserve more, but I'm wondering why. See, and that's something where it's like, that's interesting. I didn't really pull that way. But when you just pointed out, well, they could have just said this, if that's what they meant. When you said like... The way they oh, worded they, it is They could have just said, oh, well, that's why we need to put more money into this. Yeah. They could have just that's literally said the words. That's why they need to bump our and, and and I'm like, they have no obligation to bump For you bump guys at home, we actually went back and forth a lot about this. We did. We did. In fact, I would love to know what, what, what the audience is actually sure. thinking as far as, like, do you guys agree that maybe there was a little bit of a change in the words that it was important? How did you guys interpret yeah. what did Logan say to William? <laughs> is it just simply that we should get more money out of it, or is it a different interpretation like um we have a specific investment in this place so let us know in the the comments below because we at this point we still don't know (laughs) anything and that's the great part about the show because there's always questions questions. there are questions we are searching and one thing that's happening when you search you can become the man in black and search for the blood royale Uh, you were talking about can i talk about the man in black (laughs) no because i was saying that in this episode the man in black first of all he has such a presence man it's ed harris man he's that guy who's played call of duty way too many times he's the guy that's played grand theft auto way too many times he can count the seconds as far as and here comes the turtle and mario's gonna jump on him now like he (laughs) is the ultimate hack cheat guy of westworld yeah yeah to a science like literally to a science because obviously westworld is one big ball of science oh yeah and he still has lawrence and he is there's his agenda to find the maze he's still following the map oh yeah and oh man it's just so good (laughs) we find out that he is doing it for the the hosts oh yeah yeah, so and, I, and I disagree with that. I, See, uh, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, I you gotta so disagree. Much. I don't know if you have to disagree. Well, this is the great thing about the show because the thing is, okay, you watch a show we still for each an other, hour. For the record, you watch a show for an hour, and then after that hour, you discuss the show yeah. for about two hours with your friends, and that's what makes it great. Uh, only, only, only two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, maybe three, maybe three. Who knows? I don't know about two. But, but so he's searching for the uh, the blood royal where the snake lays his eggs, yeah. and while he is looks over. At the river, and it kind of makes sense. Yep. There she goes. Armistice. Uh, armist- is it Armistice? Armistice. 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 That's right. <laughs> and, and by the way, we looked up that definition too. But moving oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were starting to look up everything. Names everything mean means things, something. guys. It's not just stuff, people. Yeah, exactly. They're watching us. They're <laughs> watching us right now. But so he sees her, and there she goes with that tattoo, which uh, it's interesting. A big tattoo, by interesting the way. fact. <laughs> interesting fact. And uh, Easter egg, if you guys didn't notice, uh, she was actually originally in the show well in a flashback when ford was giving us a whole breakdown of everything between him oh, and, and the Arnold. program yeah in the exactly program, program of westworld program of westworld and uh he goes over the portion where he's talking about well they heard voices and they became crazy there's a scene where they go and you see her sitting there with her face scratched up mm-hmm. and uh it's her and then later we go to a scene where you see her in town and you know now she had the snake tattoo and blah blah yada yada, yada. so easter egg she's been there before but <laughs> <laughs> um but the mib uh 
uh, finds her and he is enthralled by her. <laughs> enthralled Did he by her. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't think anybody's going to take Dolores' spot oh, anytime no. soon. Oh, no. I'm going to strongly disagree with you on that one. <laughs> I don't think so. I that think was a huge tattoo, by the way. Like, it went the, all, all the way up until her face. But like, he's shown was... more respect and admiration to this girl than we've seen yet of him showing to Dolores. Uh, well, Ooh, speaking of... <laughs> I will say this. Like you said, this, this show is too smart to be dumb. I do think everything does have a purpose. I do think the most obvious answers that we've gotten are going to possibly be misdirection. Yeah, I feel I like agree. I feel, I feel I like I feel like that. we will never always get the complete answer. They're just more you questions. Something, yeah. But that's why they're throwing the curveball. Like, that's that's it. what they want they you to want think. They want you to lean over here when they're doing something over here. <laughs> their, their, their mission in life is to make us conspiracy theorists and be like, oh, that's what they want you to think. That's but that's the it. real villain is yourself. So anyway, let's move it on. But no, that's exactly it. And MIB is trying to figure out what's going on with the game. I just realized and, we're calling him MIB. That's yeah, amazing. Know, he's the man in black. I know, but that's amazing. That's it, Please right? Continue. Right? That's that's MIB. That's it. So, <laughs> the, well, yeah, yeah, I'm too cool for school. That's guys. true. True story. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't graduate. Uh, so, <laughs> Ford's story uh, is pretty huge. Yeah. And it's, my thing is, when it comes to MIB, uh, Ford's story is bleeding into the things that are happening with the man in black. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean uh, Wyatt. Yes. So how large is Ford's Ooh. story? When you really think about it, it's starting to encompass everybody's everything. We're starting to get an idea. It's starting to bleed into other things where it's like now the man in black is being introduced to uh, Wyatt. He just really got the name drop. Mm -hmm. And then we know that Teddy is definitely connected. And yes. he just thought of this story, yeah. but he didn't just think of his story. Well, not clearly, on the spot, yeah. No, clearly he's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, of course. But he's had it, but he knows how far this story reaches. He's been working on this piece and for a while. That's amazing to yeah. me. I, I love every bit of it. Yeah. And, um, oh, I love this stuff. I love this stuff. <laughs> just keeps you guessing. Oh, every bit of it. Uh, we'll be right back. Ford's narrative is, is huge. Oh, Ford is amazing. And this episode, yeah. it's so, it's speaking about how great he is, oh, Ford, <laughs> Ford gets to have a conversation with Teresa. that is with Teresa. pretty, pretty big because he's flexing his muscles. You know? well, he, well, he flexed he really a lot was. more than he his really muscles. If you know what I mean, <laughs> maybe you don't, maybe you do. But no, but here's the thing I love about this, uh, this scene with Ford and Teresa is you get to see the lead up to the flex. Mm. Like we've seen in subtle instances like in his studies or in his uh, private quarters outside of Westworld where mm -hmm. he has um, an AI playing a piano and then stopping without any type of gesture or motion. You get to see the respect of him having conversations with somebody. You get to sometimes see or not see his even um, a signal to his world Telling him to do stuff. Oh yeah. So the build up, but please continue. I just want like I love. Oh no 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 no. That's it. That's that's yeah. exactly where I was going with it. It's yeah. just uh, like you see him get to turn on God mode, and Ooh. it happens. But before we even go into God mode, right. we got to talk about the visions and everything else that happens before you get to see God. Mm. One of the visions that's interesting to me was Lawrence's daughter. Lawrence's daughter. Oh, Dolores is uh, um, vision. Uh, Dolores yeah. vision, sure. and uh, that was. Okay, that was, there's a lot that's happening in that small scene. Because, you know, Dolores' daughter pops up, and she's sitting there on the well, and she starts speaking to Dolores. Yeah. Do you guys remember what she said? Not word by word. Yeah, I don't remember word by word, but all I remember was essentially talking to her and making her pay attention to the maze. Right, right yeah, yeah, yeah. She was, was oh, wrong. oh, you know, that exactly, that's exactly it. The reason why, because I associated it with, uh, oh, this is her start of her RPG. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, yes, yeah. Yes, Bernard, yeah. The yes, Bernard planted the seed. But this is the little girl saying, you know, this is like her, this is like her little fairy for Link. You know what I mean? Right. Go find Zelda. Right. Start. You know I mean? <laughs> and then she just, and she, she disappears. Oh yeah. She disappears. So that's really, really interesting. Now we have um, two people going for the maze and it's, it, just the way they're awaking and becoming self-aware because we have Maeve having deja vu, essentially. Mm -hmm. An artificial intelligence essentially having deja vu, which is really, really interesting. Oh, man. Dolores having an internal and external struggle with identity yeah. oh. versus seeing Westworld as this beautiful place of majestic value, which it still is. But now she is not just questioning, hardcore questioning mm. her purpose, her existence, and even just relevance. That is human. And we see that happen when she has a conversation with William. Yes. Because there are moments where she has flashes of the cleanup. Mm -hmm. You know, the cleanup men. I don't sure. know what else to call them right now. 
Like, um, on, like on the hazmats. Well, what are they? Did we? The did, shade. There well, we go. Oh, you want the official there we name? Go. Yes. The shade. Oh, and actually, Kelly had it. Well, we could talk about this at the end, but well, she, yeah. she had an interesting reason as far as why they could be called the shade. So moving on. No, we'll, so we'll, 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 I won't we'll call them the shade until then because I don't want to like keep referring to shade and people are like, why are you calling him the shade? Because yeah. they called him the shade in the in the. Okay, well, fine. Well, fine. That's the reason. Mind. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, okay, so, uh, well then, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Get off of the show. <laughs> so, um, she has, <laughs> she has flashes of, uh, the shade. Yes. Uh, and immediately see her programming kicks in and pretty much tells her to ignore it because it's something that's not happening with mm-hmm. it. Not something that's not directly connected to the storyline or her loop at that moment. So her programming kicks in when she's speaking to William and she goes, oh, I had a shiver. And it's just like... I need her to get rid of that freaking programming and talk because communication is the most important thing that can happen that you guys are omitting. Like, if there's so much being omitted. I don't think it's all programming. I do think that she's protecting herself because we know she can lie. Oh, that's very true. We know she could go away from the truth. Well, no, no. Uh... Omission, omission of truth can sometimes also be a lie. I, I think she can I lie. Because yeah, thinking I back to it, the, part, the moment where, the moment, there's a moment earlier. Actually, which, I do agree. Uh, I take it back. I totally agree. She is capable of lying, but please continue. No, she, she, she knows more than she's leading on. Yeah. But she's still struggling. But I, but I don't think it was programming. I think that it's, it's her covering up so she doesn't reveal to anyone, doesn't draw attention. That she knows. I yeah, don't think she's at that stage of awareness yet. Well, there's a, she's moment, getting there. there's a moment that Maverick I pointed out. There's a moment that Maverick pointed out in an earlier episode where um, he tells her, all right, well, um, I want you to go ahead and delete this. Uh, let me know that you deleted it. Okay, great. And then later towards the end of the conversation, he says, um, um, make sure that you delete this portion of the conversation. And she just says, okay. But doesn't say, like, she's supposed she to give confirm, the... confirm yeah, the she's supposed to give, Yeah, you're sure, supposed to, sure, you know, sure. it's supposed to be, here's a command, here's a confirmation. She didn't give the confirmation, and then we know later that she definitely didn't do it. Why she didn't do it? Because she wanted to hold on to that memory. So it is her hiding, keeping things to herself. Okay, okay, she I learns how to manipulate that. it, and it goes back to what you said, which is her playing the game. But, uh, yeah, but getting so, back to Ford, like, flexing his muscle, because we, we did get a lot of lead up to that, and he's having, he's having a conversation with Teresa, and essentially Teresa was trying to kind of... Be, be, she even prepared for this conversation with Ford. Mm-hmm. Not only did Ford take her to a place where she was familiar, where she could be most comfortable, oh, like yeah. literally set it up where she could win and still was like, no chick, my chess game, my pieces, my board. Shut up. <laughs> and I actually wrote down in notes, don't with me. <laughs> well, literally, he does that in the smoothest way. It was, it was like so, good. so mafioso <laughs> because it was right there, and he just he they start speaking, and he just looks over at the glass, makes sure I have to draw your attention to the glass because I need you to see what's happening right now. Yeah. So he does that, and then he continues to speak to her at the same time. And while he's doing that, she what? just starts to notice. What? Okay, this is pouring over, <laughs> and then she looks out, and he says. Every blade of grass, every every hair, every this we created, and that's when she looks out over there on the veranda and looks out and oh my god, like he made sure he told her like, <laughs> look, everything you see here I made, everything runs according to the way I want it to run. I didn't even tell these people to stop, but they know how to stop. We were talking about that. We were totally because talking about that. Yeah. It's it's without an audible command, it's happening. In my and, opinion. Uh-huh. Uh, the scene where we're seeing the wine glass overflow represented him telling her, look, you can't handle all of this. That's You're right. the glass. Yeah. All of this, all this me is, is the wine pouring yeah, out. That's right. Agreed. 100% that's right. agreed. That's right. And, and Go and back and tell them. And that's what he did. And I love the setup. I get oh, like, it. This show is beautiful. This show is absolutely beautiful. Gave her oh all God. the advantages. Gave her all the cars. And just to have her realize on the spot, like, this is where I used to sit. Because she used... We, we learned that Teresa did come to Westworld as a little as a girl. child. So she is familiar with it. And then that magic, essentially almost going to Disneyland and realizing that the magic isn't real because she even acknowledges that, yeah. you know what, I realized like, eh, this place really isn't for me. Oh. Gave her all the cards and Ford was just like, no, no. You have no <laughs> idea what you're getting into. Seriously, step aside or you're going to get hurt. There was no way that you can handle all of this. You can't it was handle just, the truth. That was exactly it. Now, I Jack, love that Jack how you Nibble pointed son. that out. Yeah. That makes so Everything much sense. Means like, Everything oh, means something. Like, oh, gosh. And which means that, no in this show. Which means the hair thing means something. I mean, the curls mean something. That means the See? things in the hair and the there color. You Either that or the hairstylist needs to be but fired. That, that kind of brings me to the, the name of Shade. 
the okay. reason yeah, why please. this was placed this. on I them was that um, when the characters get these memories mm-hmm. of the shade, when they like listen up, the, the recollect, recollections that they get, the memories, the dreams that we've talked about yeah. in the past, um, it's usually in the state where they're dead and the lights are shining. Or being operated Yeah, so are being operated. The lights are shining oh on them and it God. covers. Oh when they God. see it, it's, it's, it's yeah. the shade from the light. The light is the like the goodness that the is the, okay. their world and then the shade is the darkness that they bring into it. They're the shade. They're the darkness. I don't know what you were doing but she told me this and I was like, and that's, and that's why I'm guessing they call them the shade. And I'll tell you what, if that's not the reason, it needs to be the reason because that's <laughs> oh a great God. reason. They're the demons. Every time, yeah, and they lean on, oh my gosh, I, I didn't want to start into that too, but that's true. No, the it's, it, it's beautiful. Uh, it's really beautiful. Oh really my cool. God. Well, something that was pretty cool to us and actually debunked a lot of things was uh, the man in black referring to Arnold. Yeah. Uh, he goes. There's another in thing too, but yes, but go for it. But and no, I, I mean, things he, as well. <laughs> <laughs> he, so, he he goes he in that. when he uh, does that, and he starts speaking of uh, Arnold and the way he really gets into the subject of Arnold with mm-hmm. uh, arm 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 Armistice. 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 Yeah. I I say snake tattoo. Potato potato. You know. Snake tattoo. Oh, state tattoo. That's what I call her. Uh, but Armistice. <laughs> Armistice. But anyways. And uh, he goes in and he starts to uh, say, well, there was a guy here uh, named Arnold. And first I'm thinking, yeah. okay, he's going to try to finesse his way as far as speaking of Arnold. Mm. And then after that, says forget it. And sure. he died in the park and blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. You're you're going way off here. Like, you're going to... Yeah. You're gonna blow up her servers. You're not gonna understand what's going on. Like you're you're gonna tell her about her god essentially in a way. You can't just do it that way. Yeah, you can't give her and, a whole potato. And when he does, she goes, oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. And just moves on. And just moves on because that's what they're programmed to do. Sure. And that made it so interesting to me because it was like, okay, that also lets us know that, well, unfortunately, guys, uh, I'm I'm gonna say that it just debunked a the theory that a lot of people have, which is the man in black is Arnold. Well, also, in addition to that, I mean, again, everything, anything is possible in the show right now. Right. Mm-hmm. But we did have a conversation because they do, I mean, the Men in Black, MIB, I, I need to get with that. MIB <laughs> did link up with Armistice's crew. Yes. And part of the party did mention that, hey, you, your, your foundation or your work saved my sister's life. So the Men in Black oh, God, has yeah. a life outside of Westworld. He just knows it really well. Well, yeah, definitely. So that's true. Hold on, we're gonna stop right there for a moment. I'm stop. We're gonna take a small break. We'll be right back and we'll pick it up. <laughs> but definitely, he he goes right into that yeah. concerning the part of well, oh yeah, he really helped me out. And, uh, I, I, your sister found and the and man in <laughs> black was just like you mentioned anything, else. dude. This was the <laughs> epitome, and this is where it gets really real and kind of close to home. Because yeah. it's like I'm on vacation. Shut up. Listen, don't, I don't want to talk about work. Or I will about kill it you. Again. Yeah, you speak about it again. I'll slit your fucking throat. And, and, and the fact I'm is, oh man, it's just that was, that was just a moment <laughs> where you were just like, oh man, I thought I knew and I did not. Thanks, no, Westworld. No, I didn't know at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn. And then we start to see the man in black go through his whole gameplay, which he's played. He he's had a lot. to have played. He's had to have played a lot. But he also he revealed a lot. This is the oh, most definitely. he revealed off of this. Definitely. Years. 30 years is a long time. No. I'm telling you, this is pro expert level gamer. I'm telling mm. you, he literally can count the, the pixels in like, okay, it's going to take you about 2.5 seconds to do this. You know what I mean? Like he has it down to a science and he even proves oh. that where he has to break out uh, Hector. Not yeah. Hector. Is it Hector? Um, the, Hector is the, uh, the, 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 the half native bandit Hector. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Hector. And so getting to that, so everything has to do or progress him to finding the map. Yes. And, man, Lawrence has the... <laughs> I love Lawrence. Like, I'm, I'm starting to really love Lawrence. He has a crappy deal in this arrangement, uh, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. But So him, Lawrence, and Armistice and the posse go to break out Hector. Hector. And he has everything timed. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, even tells Armistice, because he wants, in exchange for the story of your tattoo, um, I'm going to break him out, and that's all I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, want, I want the story of your tattoo. And he says, I'm going to go there with a fool, a gun, and a match. And so convincing that even the AI armistice was like, 
I would take those odds. I would take those odds. And, Nobody oh, yeah. would take those oh, yeah. odds. And, uh, I guess she I'll take, did. I guess I'll take Lawrence. She, she oh, <laughs> not to mention, going, I'm going kind of backwards, but the way that MIB joined her posse was just like, well, she's like, I, I don't think we have any room. Bam, bam. I think you have some openings. I think you have two openings. <laughs> like, oh, wow, you're hired. Yeah. Resume, Resume. amazing. By the but way. see, and it was great because, like you said, He's he's played this game so much that he knows every <laughs> moment. Oh, here goes the turtle. Here goes Mario yeah, jumping exactly. on it. Like he fire knew fire. every bit of it. And um, my question was, he knows it so much, but he's doing like all the information he's collected. He's doing something different for the first time, right? I guess that would have to be it. Like, what okay, I know when this happens. I know when that happens. I know when this got happens. It, got so it. now is my time to actually go ahead and do it and make all these thoughts, actions, plans come to fruition. Sure. So now's the time where, for the first time, I'm going to go here. I'm going to meet her. I'm going to shoot these guys. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and join their posse. And then from there, I'm going to tell her that I'm going to get Hector out. When I go to get Hector, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and light up this thing, blow the door open, blah, blah, blah. Like, all these things. So it like this is his first time doing all the things that he has planned. Sure. But still with that, how far in advance does his script get approval? Well, we because don't. like sure. when they go to the they go to the command center and then the command center's there and they're like, okay, get ready for pyrotechnics to be approved. Sure, all right, sure, pyrotechnics, sure. small one, El Diablo, blah blah blah. I do feel like this is his big play for keeps. Like this is his big move. I mean, we don't know how many times he's attempted this, right? So that's a big question because we don't have a time frame, we don't have a timeline. I already feel like Kelly's about to disagree with me. <laughs> so we don't know how often he's done it. But he even mentions to Hector, okay, you're about to be broken out in three days. I can't wait that long. This is, about, this is what's about to happen. And the fact is, whoever he wants dead would be dead. Mm. If Lawrence needed to be dead, Lawrence would be dead. And we thought he was going to set up Lawrence. We thought his play in the breakout oh, was to actually set up Lawrence. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing because Lawrence, when they go to break out Hector, he trades in Lawrence. Man in Black gets locked up with Hector. And Lawrence is pretty much set up to be executed. Gun down style. You oh, know? yeah. And just execution style. What he was supposed to get before. Exactly. He was a, <laughs> he's a renowned law, um, lawbreaker. So, yeah, he's going to get punished. He's blindfolded just like we, we met him. Mm -hmm. Blindfolded. Mm -hmm. And we get the, we get the okay. same thing when we first <laughs> meet the guy where everything is happening behind him. And that is such a shitty thing. To, that's a shitty thing to experience oh, when yeah. you think about it. Oh, all, yeah. all, you, all, all you have is, like, darkness and, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh God! Yeah, oh, bang, God. Bang. oh God! No. Oh no! Jeez, just kill me already! It's just, just get it over with. And he gets rescued by the Man in Black very okay. cleverly, and it was just, it was just such a cool scene. <laughs> so it does seem like obviously the Man in Black is methodical, but it's mm -hmm. like, where are we going with this? Because he's alive for a reason. He's getting Hector for a reason, and it's all for the map. And he's even told Lawrence. Oh, there's a great line. I'm gonna look it up. But the, the, he, everything alludes to the fact that he wants everyone's freedom. Because oh, you know what it was? Lawrence says, "I will kill you," and Man in Black says, "Maybe one day." Maybe someday. And I have <laughs> some disagreements. Ooh, shocking! I was gonna, I was gonna go into the maybe someday portion. I was but worried I wanna, that you would. I want to hear the disagreements. I do too. No, no, seriously, this is law. Okay. But I want to hear the show. Sure. Now, she's winding let up. Let me clarify. Yes. Because I do agree in some part with what you're saying, but I feel that in meaning, you mm. feel like he sympathizes and he wants... I didn't say that. Well... I didn't say that. I feel like that. I feel but, like that, right? Um, yes. <laughs> and you were saying that you think that he's been going through this many times in order to calculate everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's not necessarily about calculation. I think it's the fact that he has no fear. The problem in his eyes mm. to this game is that there is no challenge. It's just an experience. You can't die. If I was to play a video game and I couldn't die, I could just walk up to all the bad guys. Where's the challenge? His motivation lies in giving them their freedom so that he has a risk. There's a risk to the game so that he can play this game like a game where he is losing something. And that's so, I feel like it's all selfish reasons. It's, he he does not care about these creatures. Kelly is not a fan of the men in black. I'm not. He does not care <laughs> about these him. creatures. And yes, he... He's thinking, maybe someday you will be able to kill me. And that's what I want. I want there to be a risk to this game. I want there to be a challenge <coughs> to this game. And I think he's a big fat jerk. He's just like, well, he's big just a fat big jerk. fat poopy head. Is what I'm <laughs> trying to say. And I, think, and I think and his I think pants are on fire. And <laughs> Dolores is set in place to protect him. I think that, yes, they're both going towards this maze. Oh, yeah. 
but I think that she's doing it to stop him Unless... and to protect this world that she envisions as such a wonderful place. Um, uh -huh. She keeps saying, "Like I love this town or yeah. city, whatever yeah, she calls it. I love it. my life. I love it. I this love is my great. Life. You you need to see the beauty in it." <laughs> and so I, I love that dialogue. I don't life. think that. He, he's planned it. I don't think that he he meticulously planned out uh, his escape. I think that he knew, what are they going to do? I can walk up and shoot him. Um, everything, again, I think um, the show's too smart to be dumb. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think that's a great theory. I really do. I'm not saying his intentions are necessarily pure. Obviously, we've seen him do a lot of vile things and a lot of mean, mean poopy head things that makes <laughs> Kelly ruffle her feathers, and that's awesome. Like I love, I love discussions like this. But I think he is that good. I mean, everything he's done in every scene well, he's, has... Because he's skilled from playing it. Sure. I mean, but I don't my, think he planned out that... My only thing is, like, if he really wanted risk... I mean, yes, you could fall in love and it could be, like, just that... that just that I, I need this world mm -hmm. more than the world needs me type of yeah. thing. Yeah. And I need yeah, this yeah. world to evolve with me. Yeah. So I get that. But it's like... I, I get it. I get it. I just feel like there's a lot more calculation to the guy, and it does seem like he's very specific. But we'll see. I guess we'll see. I think he just doesn't have any fear. Well, and, and, but <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, nobody who attends Westworld would have fear because there's nothing to fear, allegedly. Yeah. So no, that, that, is, that, is, that is the place. To, nothing to fear I mean, with fear what, itself. What is uh, <laughs> you can basically do whatever you want. I feel yeah. like it's just an experience to be able to do whatever you want. Well, which, that's true. Which we've seen from Logan. That's very true. And yeah. the one person that, if we're going to talk about fear or anything of that nature, would be right now Maeve. Oh. Maeve has the oh, most lovely. amount of fear. Yeah. And for me, for me, it was... <laughs> she's, she's my way. It, it was amazing because Maeve gets to a point where she starts to, uh, well... Shout out to Thandie Newton, by the she way. She changed. That's amazing. You did great in this Thandie, episode. Thandie oh Newton my is so God. good at this character. Like, she pretty much changes her own narrative in this episode. She's taking control. Yeah, she does. She, does. Uh, she literally does because with everything that's been happening, she starts to prepare for what's supposed to come next because now she's having flashes of what happened. Sure. She has flashes. She knows that Hector's coming. Yeah. And her, she deja knows vu is, her deja vu is giving her the plan. Exactly. Yes. So she knows Hector's coming. She knows he's going to start. Exactly. He's going to start taking people out. So the minute he wants Hector the walks in, yes. And that's the thing. She wants to prevent that like needless violence that keeps throwing her off. And I love that. I love uh, that. Well, she definitely wants answers. That's for sure. That's all I'm going to say. She wants answers to her storyline as far as the changes and why is this happening. She wants to know about the shade. But the character is so consistent that she's more than capable where she's able to even bargain information mm. during a crisis situation. I mean, obviously, she's just calm, cool, collected anyways. Oh, yeah. But the way she manipulates Hector right there on the spot oh. in exchange for because she knows he wants the safe. This is the way I'm going to get information from you. By the way, what is this? And Hector is the one that revealed, hey, that's they call him the shade. Yeah, they they're kind of known for this. I don't know hey. how he knows that. Well, he it, knows it, because that's a great question. And I'll tell you how. Kelly's like, oh, you know, that, you know, that, sure. well, <laughs> well, you know what? You know what, Kelly? <laughs> Kelly, I will tell you right now. But what I need to do first is take a little break. All right. <laughs> All right so picking up exactly where we left off, the reason Hector knows as to why they're called the Shade, you have to remember when he was in the cell with the man in black, the man in black said, your whole half native thing. Oh. The thing is, and remember, the natives know that they're called the Shade, because remember right. when she goes to pick up the toy. Right. What is who, this? What is who this? the what little girl, this? who the little girl native was. Exactly. Girl. The little girl was, the little girl was, a, was a native. She was a brave. Yeah. And it's she like already had, the, exactly, it was their religion. So with I'm that, this one. With that being the case, that's how he knew. Yeah. So Hector knew because he's he's meant to know. He's meant to know. He's meant to know. And it's, it's part, part of his narrative. There you go. And so he did know. And they go right into the whole. Uh, well, I thought you were about to say Hawaii. Maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> the they go right into the whole Hawaii. Uh, ooh, Hawaii. And uh, then Lilo and Stitch. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to live that. that I would love to pay forty thousand dollars to live that life. Okay. <laughs> but not bad actually. She pulls out the bully knife, yeah. and um, she tells him she needs him to cut her. Very tense scene, by the way. Right here. Very oh, tense scene. You man. really see, you see her, um, her abdomen, and you, yeah. you really are wondering if Hector's going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So, and Hector, yeah. Hector is already on that kind of level of, ah, the world is crazy. No one knows yeah, anything. Madness. It doesn't matter. I am sexy. And their so. enforcers are... <laughs> wow, we got, we got well, a lot he's of He's like Antonio Banderas. I'm just saying. The mask of Zorro. He lives. Zorro writes <laughs> again. Yeah, exactly. Which also 
also starred Anthony Hopkins. Shout out to Anthony Hopkins. With that said, <laughs> but no, we have law enforcers outside beating down the door. Mayhem happening. And Maeve knows she's limited on time, but she's so cool. So is Hector. Yeah. But Maeve is cool because she is, again, getting that much more XP, experience, and just, oh, yeah. you know, just right. raising the game. And she's starting to become a player now. I mean, she mm-hmm. realizes that whatever they do each day doesn't matter. Ex- she even says it. Yeah, she that's, says that's it. That's a piece she of dialogue. Said. She says, hey, this may not even matter. Stab so. me. I'll be fine tomorrow. Yeah. And, no may, and you know what? Hey, let me get some of that tongue because, hey, <laughs> fuck it. Ugh. And But before before the door is busted open, before the bullets really start to go, she gets reaches twice, in, reaches, reaches in. in, and pulls out <sighs> the bullet. Oh, so cool. right off the bat, yeah, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> you, had the, you had the question. I'm going to let you ask it. You have to ask it. They pull out the bullet. I do not well, think that that was left there on accident. Why was the bullet left? Why was it there inside of her? <laughs> because nothing is a coincidence on mm-hmm. Westworld. It's not. It's everything. <laughs> you big mean poopy heads. <laughs> no, but honestly, that <laughs> is a question. <laughs> that is a question now that's being asked. It's yeah. Like, well, I mean, they did the mention there? that these people are lazy and sloppy, but. Oh. No, but that's that's, way that's, too, that's too important. Sloppy. That's too it's big. That's too, too big. Much. It's not a, like just cleaning her and repairing her. It's sure. leaving something in her that's very it's, obvious. Yeah. Not to mention, we know that the technicians and the scientists and the engineers. Everyone looks at these people. They are over, thorough. No, 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 no. Yes. They are thorough, and can I just say I really love the scenes where you actually see the uh, the testers and and everyone diagnose di- diagnose diagnose mm, sure. check out. Okay, yeah, sure. I know English. So they check out their the the, the host and just the uh, the prosthetics and even just the, uh, oh, the, yeah. the makeup and even yeah. like the the subtle CGI's like it looks so effective and you really truly believe these aren't aren't real people and obviously they are definitely. I, I think it was Bernard. <laughs> it could, I but, think Bernard left. But with that, that I think with, I feel like Bernard's the worst. With that, Maeve is, <laughs> Maeve is, is walking this fine so guilty. line. Maeve's working this walking this fine line where it's the question of well that everyone starts to have when they find religion that whole thing of fate versus predestination and purpose. Well, fate. What does it all mean? Like, well, the thing is, are we all asking that? She's she's jumping in and out of her storyline by remembering things and going through and putting everything together. Sure. And with that, she's drawing her own mind. She's the one that's making sure all these things are happening that she needs to happen to continue on to the next day. So it's almost like Destiny's theory. <gasps> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I literally looked through that's and I was like, it. what's the episode called again? That's okay. exactly it. That's exactly I'll it. I'm going to wait for it. Now, I'm going to wait for it. There and was something stand. I wanted to add that I noticed earlier on in the episode that Bernard says, and mm. it kind of ties in to Maeve and these like memories that she's having. Sure. The awareness. Uh-huh. Yes. Now he does... Um, tell, uh, remind me of her name again. I keep forgetting it. Elsie. Elsie. He, he, he tells Elsie when she's obsessing over that rock and what it is. If it's Orion, if it's not, we don't know yet. Yeah, exactly. But he does say, hosts don't imagine things you do. That's so such a great line. My interpretation yeah. of this was that they these um, hosts weren't given the ability. I mean, even before they said they don't have dreams. They have memories and we tell them their dreams. Sure. Sure. But they're memories. And so they don't, there's no improv in them. There's no creative thinking. There's no dreams. And so. What, uh, there's a little bit of improv. They've actually did acknowledge. They, no, I'm just saying. Improv, just saying. but it's still pulled from stuff they're from, given. Yes. Oh, they agree. can't just, this guy's just not carving a rock being like, oh, <laughs> this looks pretty. Like, no. Oh, no, like, no, no. There's something they do. Something is given. They were programmed to do. <laughs> and so that makes me go back to Maeve where, like, they don't imagine things. Like, the people, we, reality, yeah, 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 we yeah. imagine things, but they don't. Yeah. So these visions she's having, she knows she's not imagining. There's a reason. Right? Yes. There's a reason. There's a reason. No, no, I love the fact that you brought that dialogue because that is very specific. I feel like Bernard out of everyone because Ford has... Oh, Bernard. Ent- oh, Bernard. Tell me your secrets. Oh, no. Okay, Westworld, the entire cast, please tell us your secrets. <laughs> that would be amazing. Just spoil however like seasons you're about to have. That would, that would be amazing. And then we have all the cards and we will auction them off to people and we will take over the world and run the internet. I mean, <laughs> if Game of Thrones was like that, it would be, be pretty rocking six, year, six years mm-hmm. ago. But no, um, just... It is very specific, but everyone has agendas. Ford has a huge agenda. Like, even his reveal to Teresa, something is in the Man. works. And he fears nothing. He is God of Westworld. Yeah. He was there during the creation. He was there when his business partner descended, essentially Mike or the devil kind of thing. Like, we don't know. He's essentially, yeah, I made her excited. I love it when he gets excited. <laughs> so, we, we know his, his, his um, 
just his development. We're, we're starting to learn the history of everything. We're starting to know, know the purpose, and like you haven't seen anything yet. Mm-mm. Like as as much as we've seen advancements of Westworld, and they've come a long way. Yeah, like literally having like holographics and monitors and and just a per like every everybody has a job for everything. Oh, yeah. Again, we have a lot of questions as far as how it works and how things recycle and things like that, but this is still a very impressive venture. And speaking of that, when it comes to a lot of questions, we need to address what questions at least were addressed and answered so far for this episode. I will start off with, if you don't mind, Go ahead. I will start off with MIB is known outside of Westworld. So that was a that, question. That was wanted, a question. Yeah, so that it question. does allude to the fact that he is a guest. Yeah. That he has an outside life and there are other things going on. Yeah. And other people know him and recognize him. He has a bit of notoriety. And he doesn't like to be bothered during his vacation, by the way. <laughs> we, we did find um, that out. Uh, that was a question I was wondering. a day, I wouldn't want to be bothered during my vacation. It was a question oh, no. I was wondering, oh, no. so I wonder if he hates his vacation. Oh, he, they answered it. Okay, he go. hates oh, his okay. vacation. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's just, I was hoping. <laughs> For me, um, it's going to hurt to say it, but. Oh, man, that's going to hurt too. What? He's, uh, he's not Arnold. Oh. God. That's something that we kind of thought about. We wondered, okay, you know, is it? And he's not Arnold. Yeah, yeah. You're good? You're Does it also address that essentially right. William can't be the man in black? Oh, well, yeah, you know. there's there's no separate time. Like, oh, because me? Know, really, honestly, man, because it was too easy, and again, with the hair thing with Kelly, and then with yeah. the <laughs> because oh, we can't. No. Oh, okay, so cool. those are things that were What's answered. Something that got and, answered for you. Maybe on this episode, was there anything? Are you was like, nah, I know. More questions. Okay. Oh, no more questions. Well, then let's move on to that. <laughs> and what more? What other questions have now been brought up? Sure. Because of this episode. Well, the hair curls. For the sure. Curls. <laughs> that means something. Hair we better find the in the next episode. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. Comment below, people. <laughs> Tell me about those hair curls. I need to know. <laughs> DJ, we hope you have any questions that now you... Well, are... clearly hair curls. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to know what the... Uh, again, it's not a new question, but now I'm really interested to know who the map is meant for. Ooh. Okay. Who is I, the map? I have an idea. Oh, what? <laughs> Jeez! I just had an idea. I just. <laughs> well, I mean, it, I'm sorry. Please go on. Is it a theory? And if it's a really big theory, it should be saved for the crackpot theories. There's, it can be. I mean, it's just my guess. I'm on saying it. It's she thing. just say okay. it, please. We're here. We're here. I mean, I believe um, that this show is really trying to like nail the hammer on the head. Whatever. Nail. Whatever. The nail, I don't know. Yeah, no, Ooh, yeah. Nail, nail. Now, oh, the nail, what is the hammer. This is hammer. Hammer the nail. Hammer, this is hammer the nail. I'm mad because I'm head, like, right? what? That made sense. Okay. What? What did make sense? Oh. That, you know. Right. What is this life? Is this, are they human? Is this real life? Can we create like a synthetic life? Mm-hmm. And then it keeps being like, these people don't take this seriously. They treat it like it's not like human lives. It's not humanity. Which is the point. Yeah, which is the point. And so I believe the game is meant for people who can sympathize with this, that they can believe that this can be humanity, not yeah. someone, not not the, it was not meant for the MIB because he does not sympathize with these people. He doesn't care what happens to them. He's selfish. She's, I think she's starting meant, to warm up to MIB, by the way. No, I'm not. No, she's not. No, she's not. No, no, she hates it. She hates it more she now. She can die for all I care. See, really? there you go. Wow. Not be bothered. But he can but die. <laughs> I think it's meant for someone who can see this world and... See it for what it can be. Sure. sure. Not be like, oh, this is a game. Oh, nice. I do nice. wonder what we would find at the end. Of, well, in your example, because again, that's one theory out of many. Is it, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. And it's great. And it's great. I, my, my big question is, what would, what would be at the end of that rainbow? Um, that, that'd be my question. My question is just simple, quick, easy. Um, how big of a part will Wyatt have to play in apparently everybody's story? Sure. I just have a few questions. <laughs> That's a good question right there. Uh, but with those questions, <laughs> those are really good ones that at least so we got many. to at least ask. So there will be a whole lot more, and I want to know what you guys think as far as questions, too. Make sure to leave some in the comments. Right now, we'll take a break, and we'll come back with some Crackpot Theories. And so this brings us right back to Crackpot Theories. Crack. Exactly. Um, I don't really know if I have one, but 
I know Kelly has some ideas up her sleeves. Kelly, Kelly an idea? So I think I've been Kelly. pretty open about it. Kelly, she hasn't had a <laughs> single idea. I don't think there's anything that I haven't mentioned yet. She has been <laughs> so quiet this whole episode. Kelly, speak up. Please. I do feel that the, the um, conversations that Bernard has with Dolores could be set in the future. Like all of them. Oh, that's I think that something's happened and then he's... So for her after a the different fact, time, maybe. yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, it's hard to prove, okay. but I have I have a hunch that that could be something we see. Sure. Okay. That's actually okay. not a bad one. I like that one a lot, actually. Okay. And oh, I do now. I do have some crap out there. So. Oh please, no, no, no! I would love for you to go because you have it. I'm still like, do I have one? Please go ahead. All right. Um, the voice that we heard. My theory is that it's Arnold. Uh, I feel that Arnold Which voice has, at one time? Um, when it said kill, uh, mm-hmm. and also remember, um, those things where we're hearing Dolores start to uh, have the thoughts that she can hear those that voice, mm-hmm. that voice, that the God voice, um, is I feel that's Arnold. I feel he's doing kind of like a Arnold died. He may have uploaded his consciousness in bits and pieces, and it's kind of like uh, how did I say it? Like the Horcrux to Harry Potter, mm-hmm. where he splits his soul up into different uh, oh, that's, different parts uh, and bits and places. And it, with that being the case, um, some of it's within the reveries, and it's coming to fruition. It's coming out. It's coming out and making itself known. It's manifesting itself. Sure. No. No. I, I, the, <laughs> I just, that's, the ball that's is I'm definitely hearing. in motion, and the whole plan is going into motion. I do think Bernard, uh, not Bernard, um, is it Bernard? Not Bernard, um, the... Uh, Arnold Ford. Arnold, Bernard. thank you, thank you. He's like, the whole cast, like, okay, is it Ford? Is it this? Yeah, Sounds like, like... One of these three guys. Two syllables, once. okay. <laughs> but no, I do think that um, um, Arnold is the virus that they keep referring to. Mm-hmm. I do feel like he is the, the virus, because they, they don't treat it like it's a, um, a condition or a, a technical problem. They make they actually refer to it almost like it's a virus. Yeah, they do. Like, oh, it has spread this way. Oh, this, it has been affected. Yeah. They've been affected by this. And I do think that uh, that Ford do, does have some knowledge about that. I, I, do think think, I do think that it's interesting that... Um, I do want to know, and I know this is back to your questions, uh-huh. I do want to know what does Ford have in... in, in, in Stored because his ambition is clearly mm. something beyond everyone's comprehension, and he is in control so much. He mm-hmm. doesn't fear the board. Yeah. He doesn't no. fear the directors. No. He doesn't fear his employees. Mm-hmm. He doesn't fear anyone. From what we've seen, he seems like he's got a lot of power. And he even yeah. makes a point, yeah. and I love this. I mean, to me, it's like, oh, I should uncross my arms because Bernard said it. that makes me feel. Eh. That makes me feel like I'm closing myself off, so I have to show the <laughs> stomach. Eh. So, but I, I, I do love the fact that. The implications are acknowledged from Ford, where hmm. he goes to like he he says to Teresa, "Oh, I am not crazy. I've never been in more control. Shut up." Not, not <laughs> really. Yeah, pretty much. Those are the words that are said. But he's very aware. But that's the thing. Like he's he well he is very aware and he knows about everything that's happening. He says we know uh, our employee. Yeah. Well, he knows about the employees just as well as he knows about the guests. Yes. Or well, we know about the guests. Just as well as we know about our employees. Yes. And then he drops a bomb on her of, I know what you and Bernard have been doing, you dirty, dirty people. Yes, girl, yes. And also, let's address that fact. Is Bernard cheating on his wife? Yeah, it hasn't been confirmed whether or not they're split. Are they, yeah. yeah, we don't know. Because it's like, what, so did he call, hey, it's the anniversary of our kid's death. I just wanted to have you tell me how I don't remember that. I'm so. actually with Kelly. What? It's very common for... Parents to split after the death of a child. Yes, exactly. So. But the thing is, so, but the phone call, and he says, yeah, you know how we don't get reception out here. Uh, so, There's, like, I'm sorry. Good point. how There's, does that work out? I feel like, like the conversation itself, I say uh-huh. I'm sorry for interrupting, like, I agree with Kelly. I feel like it was the conversation that, that alluded a lot more where Bernard said something along the lines to, also shout out to Gina Torres, because anytime I see Gina Torres, it's like, hey, you're bae. But, <laughs> like, clap it up. Yeah. But, he, uh, he asks her, oh, are you, ups- um, are you upset? And she says, it used to bother me. Yeah. It used to bother me when I couldn't get a hold of you. Now, not so much. So I feel like there's a lot of indication that... A lot of distance between them. Sure. Yes. Like, if they're not separated, or if they're not divorced, they're definitely... They're separated. They're not close. They're not, like, they're not good. Oh, okay. Well, so they he's could not... still be together. They're just... I do think they're separated, but they're definitely not... Unspoken agreement that this is done. Yeah, so it's pretty sure. much done. I mean, whatever, go diddle your... Board members diddly, or whatever. Did you put Flanders on me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Do your diddly in the damn scuba diddy. Go, go diddly. That does show. remind me mm-hmm. that I kind of have a feeling that Bernard's motives behind all of this stuff he's doing with Dolores is to maybe 
one day bring back his son. Son, I knew Absolutely. it. I knew it. Absolutely. I knew it. I knew it. I, oh, I think, good I think, job. I think we're all here. Good job. I think we're all here. I, think we're all here. I like that. <laughs> I like that. She's like, she's so proud. Like, yay, we agree. <laughs> Finally, we agree. Like we're all we agree golden. on something. <laughs> I like that. I, no, that's, I do feel like his son is a big motivation. Mm-hmm. Even enough for, actually enough for even Ford to mention it to Bernard. He even mentions yeah, it to Ford. That's so that's an uh, excellent call, Kelly. Mm. Well, I mean, I feel like everyone's a little selfish in all their motives, except for the AIs. Oh, well, for now. There for was now. a theory, there was for a theory floating around the internet where people were saying, what if Bernard actually is a, yeah. a, a house without actually knowing it? And what happened at that moment when, um, what's his name, brings up the sun, um, when Ford brings up the sun also, sure, sure. it happened right after uh, his conversation with Dolores where Dolores brings up the sun. So I'm wondering, mm, and, and once again, Ford seems to know everything that's happening. I think he I does know he that Bernard is having those uh, meetings. I think he knows. He has to. So he I, think he even, to. I think he, he even knows. Everything. I think he, he knew God. that conversation. Yeah, he exactly. is God and Dolores so, is his first Eve. Exactly. The Eve in the garden. Like, exactly. that's your first creation. You're going to know what happens with your first kid. Exactly. I screwed up with that kid the most. So with that being the case, I think he knew that. He knows, he knows what was happening. He gives uh, some type of auditory command to him, uh, to Bernard, about the son. and says, remember, don't, uh, don't, don't make the same mistake Arnold did, et cetera, et cetera. Also, I'm sorry to hear this. You know, I know this can be weighing on you right now you know, concerning your son. Yeah, sure. Then after that, he walks off and has that conversation with the wife. What if that conversation is just something that's kind of orchestrated, like part of his loop, to make him still believe he's a human, blah, blah, blah. This is all a theory that I read. So, uh, yeah, just theory I read. It's not my theory. I read it, and I just wanted to just, you know, Share it with the world. Throw see what you guys thought about it. Uh, tear it down if you want to. And, and if I think you do, make a, sure you do it in the comments. I was about to say, I think it'd be a great <laughs> idea. If they have theories, just to let us know. Exactly. Because, like, That's what I want. Sky That's is what the I limit want. with Westworld theories, I think. Also, I have the man in black theory about the 30-year thing. But I'll save that for later. Aww. Screw that guy. <laughs> yeah. I don't talk about him anymore. Oh, I have another theory. I'll save man in black, MVP. I'll share, I'll share another theory next week after we see what happens. What a record. But, I sound like I like what he does. <laughs> It's not like he, he does everything great. Definitely, but we definitely want to but, hear about your comments. <laughs> She's like, no, I just want to no, add. No. I just want to add that shit. right now, at this moment, the show is trying to make you sympathize with him. With who? With the MIB. Is it? Yeah. 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 It's making you think that his when like when you heard him say like oh maybe one day you will be able to kill me you're thinking oh he's trying to free these guys give him freedom oh what a nice guy oh and yeah and so I think that it's steering you in that direction it's gonna be like I feel like it's yeah. doing his job just like that no I feel like it's doing his job <laughs> to where it's having us it's giving us misdirection there's no mm. clear answer because obviously it had that effect on you we're just like that dude raped the girl and she did he did that, 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 that. Nah, nah. and then while, while other some opinions would be like no it's not what it seems and, da, 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 da. and I think that's 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 the great part about the show it does okay. free up the conversation and discussions <laughs> and then releases the Kelly like a wombat he's like no unleash the Kelly spider monkey thank you but no that's exactly I do want to know still what your theories are. So please go ahead and put them in the comments. We will continue to talk to you guys throughout the week concerning those comments. Uh, <laughs> I think you guys really just going to... this arguments between these two. I'm going to have to separate hey, you guys. No, we're, we're good. <laughs> we're, good. Guys. we're good. We're good. Come here. Come here. Oh, Come here. Can you get the hugs? Look at that. Look at that. It's like the man in black and divorce. We're hugging. That's what it felt like right no. there. <laughs> well, I think, I think right now we've done we've, we've done the best. We've done the most. Now it's time to make sure that we say goodbye to people. Make sure you guys subscribe to our channel so you can see if uh, she kills him, he kills her, one of the two. Why well, I got to kill? I don't know. It could happen. It could, I don't know. I don't know what your narrative is. officially moving the Westworld. <laughs> I don't know what your narrative is. Screw all of this. Joe and Maverick are still stuck on the train, so I don't know. Chop get anywhere but well, <laughs> make go. sure you subscribe for that uh <laughs> and please follow us on twitter at that hashtag show and use the hashtag bullets and milk so we can keep the conversation going we will continue to talk to you, uh, to you. i want to say thank you uh on behalf of well joe and maverick who aren't here and uh we'll say good night guys you guys want to say good night goodbye Good night, good night, and goodbye. Good night, good night. All right, well, this has been Bullets and Milk. Uh, bang, bang, go, go. go. go.